Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of videos about games and the people who played them. And now, here are your hosts, Tom and Holly Vassell. Welcome to the Dice Tower! Yes, welcome to the Dice Tower. I'm Tom Vassell, and this is Robin Holly. Uh, today we'll be talking about kids' games again. And we're at three games today. In kids' game, theme really is king. And, but it's really neat when the game can come together and kind of add to that theme. And I think it does that in the three games we're going to talk about today. The first game we're going to mention today is Funny Fishing, a game in which you actually, you know, it's not necessarily feel like fishing, but because the game is made up of many pieces and many strings together, the idea is a lot of fun. Let's take a closer look at the game. There is a mess of fishing lines and fish and rods, and each line is connected to a fish, or sometimes they're connected to a boot or a can of tuna. At the beginning of each round, a pile of cards is taken, and the top card is turned over, and a fish is shown. Everyone looks at the fish, and then we're going to try and find which uh, fishing line that fish goes with. So I touch one of the fishing rods, and then the, every, all the other players will touch one at the same time. So then once we touch it, we take it, and we pull it up, and we see... Did I catch the fish that I wanted? No, that's the wrong fish. Too bad for me. Did Holly get the fish that we wanted? No, again, that's the wrong fish. But you're only allowed to use your eyes to track and follow the fishing lines, and then you're touching them. There's three different colors, so it kind of helps differentiate. And it's really a lot of fun because there's also two of every fish, so that way you have a chance to get your fish even if someone else is already gone. And it sounds easier than it is, but it's not, again, it's also not as hard as it may sound. Now, one of the problems, my concerns with the game might be that it's easy for everything to get tangled up. But because of the way the game is stored and because of how uh, you're constantly pulling fish out to see if you've caught them, I've run into only a few times, maybe after I haven't played for a long time, pulling it out and untangling everything. But the the string is very flexible, very easy, and very durable. I've yet to have a string come out of the tokens on the end. So all in all, it's a fun game, a fast game, and kids, good job. And kids have a, a pretty good idea of being able to find the fish. The fish are very different shapes, sizes, and colors, very easy to differentiate. Lots of fun, and so I recommend Funny Fishing. Another game that's a lot of fun, and <laughs> I guess I find some humor in the... Uh, name itself is Toss Your Cookies. Now, Toss Your Cookies in at least America is a euphemism for vomiting, which is not really a fun theme for a game. At least I think so. But this game actually includes large cookies. And these cookies look very realistic. In fact, one of my children, and I'm not going to mention who, when they were younger, took a bite of it because it looked so good. And the cookies really do look good. And I mean, maybe some of the listeners out there don't like cookies, but I'm telling you, cookies are tremendous and basically what you are doing on your turn is you are trying to get all the cookies of one kind plus the glass of milk one of these cookies is the lucky one it's the glass of milk I'm trying to find it amongst all this yummy cookie goodness there we go the glass of milk if you have that and all the cookies of one type then you'll win and I believe there's six of each type and the glass of milk and everyone's trying to do that, and you do that each turn by rolling the dice. You may have to pass cookies to the left of you, pass cookies to the right of you, pass them across from you, or when you have, when you roll the toss, throw one or more cookies in the middle. Occasionally, you'll roll toss and then all, which is toss all your cookies in the middle. So you toss everything in the middle, then everyone starts grabbing as many as they can into their hand, which makes a lot of fun. But of course, again, only the milk is what matters because while you want the six cookies of your kind, you also need to milk to win. And just tremendous art, good thick tiles. Well, there occasionally there's some wild cookies like this. And just everything works together to make the game a lot of fun. There's even these half-eaten cookies. What good are these? None. It's disgusting. But again, the I the idea of cookies, they're very thick tiles. They're lots of fun to throw up in the air. And the game really works well with kids. Adults may not be as enamored with the game, but it's one that you can play with your kids and have a lot of fun because you're all searching for cookies and you are you are generally bound to what the dice say. But when, for example, you have to pass a cookie to the right or left, 
you get to pick which one and kind of keep an eye on where the cookies are going and see who gets what. But when you toss them in the middle, hands it's a hands down free for all to get those cookies and a lot of fun. So I would highly recommend um, toss your cookies as a good kids game. And then our final kids game today is Baron Stark. Uh, this game comes in German, but I doesn't matter remotely. This is another dexterity game, and it seems like I've been talking a lot about these, but one that I find highly entertaining, and you'll see why. Let's take a closer look. So here is Baron Stark the bear, or the honey bear, looking to carry around different piles of honey on top of his little wooden crate container here. Basically, the game works like this. On your turn, you roll a die, and it will say from zero to three. So I roll the die, and I move the bear one. I look at the disc at where the bear landed, and this is placed randomly, and it has white flowers. So I need to take one of the white discs and place it on top of him using only one hand. That's pretty easy, but now it's the next player's turn, and so she rolls and gets a three. So now she needs to move him three without making that white barrel fall off, so be careful. One, and I don't know why we're moving counterclockwise, but keep going. Two, and then one more. Three, and of course we don't want, okay. Now, she had to reach all the way across the table. I wouldn't normally make it like that. And that, most of the time, if she had made the barrels fall off, then she would have to take the tile on which the bear lands. Or, And once a certain amount of people get tiles, the game is over and whoever has the fewest wins. But let's say she did land there. Then she, that's a purple flower spot, so she'll take a purple one and put it on top of the other pot. And now it's my turn. And now I have to roll the dice, and I roll one, and I have to move it without making either one fall. Here I land on top of a green patch, and I add a green barrel to him. And you can see that the game gets harder, obviously, the more of these. Fortunately for Holly, she rolled a zero, so all she has to do is put another green one on. Now don't make him fall. All right, now that's it's getting tougher, and so I roll the die, I get a three. I have to move these without making either one fall. One, two... Three, I landed on the red, so now I put one of the giant red flower pots. And you can keep going until eventually it falls. Or if you get them all on, then to moving it and taking them all off. But I highly recommend that you don't. Now, this is a game that works exceptionally well with both kids and adults. There's a couple reasons for that. Kids are going to like the idea of stacking the honey pots, of moving the bear. You can kind of uh, tilt it in their favor by letting them use two hands or what. But even with adults, you don't have to use this square... Um, base. Instead, you can use a round base, which just does not fit as well. And adults can do all kinds of crazy things. For example, if I'm yellow and it's my turn, I'm placing the red, I might place the red off kilter as far as I can so that the next player has a much harder time moving it. And you can get some really crazy deliberately placing the barrels in such a way that it will make it fall for the next person. And that's to me, is a lot of fun. And you, again, it's it's probably best with children, but adults can try it out and have a lot of fun, and I think it's one that you can play with your kids and be on a very even keel with them. So here I got three kids' games that I think are ex exceptionally good. Funny Fishing, Toss Your Cookies, and Baron Start. With lots of kids in my house, I'm always looking for games that give a fresh feel to board games, something that's fun for them and yet feels different than other things that we've played. And all three of these really don't have anything that compares. Baron Stark has the stacking that you found in other games, but here you're moving the stack, which is fun. Toss your cookies, you're throwing cards uh, that are round cookies rather than just passing around cards declaring old maid. And funny fishing, well, pulling out or finding the right fish with the right line, I haven't seen that in any other game. So they're unique themes and a lot of fun. Join us next week as we talk a little bit about our name, the Dice Tower, and we'll talk some more about kid games in the future. But until then, I'm Tom Basil. And this is my very sinister co-host, Holly. We'll see you guys next time. Say my name. Holly. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.